Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. Welcome to this video where I just want to show you how to implement custom error pages in Umbraco 10 and higher. Um, in this video, we're just going to follow along with this blog post really to get it working. And we're going to use the clean starter kit as well to follow along with. So let's get started and see how we get on. So first of all, go to package script writer, psw.codeshare.co.uk and the default script that we've got here will just install the latest version of Umbraco with the clean starter kit. So we'll go to our folder where we want to install it, use open terminal and paste the command in. I used control click there to open the um, website. What we'll do is we'll just open it in Chrome instead of Edge. And then I will also, while the front end of the, page, of the website loads, so if there's the front end, I'll also go to the back end as well. The login details are on the options tab here. So admin and then password. But they could be whatever you wanted them to be. Just for ease, I've just used the default that we get with that. Anyway, so this is the website we've got. One thing I do want to do, first of all, is just change the document type name for the error page because it's just called error. And that will cause an issue um, with this uh, code that's in the blog post. So what I want to do is actually rename that to be error page. So if we go into settings and we go to document types, pages, and then we've got this error, we'll call it error page. And then we'll just add the page in the alias like that and do save. And then we'll go to content and then we will have a look, see if there are any issues with the page now that we've done that. And it's it's got an error with the template because it's expecting a model of error, but actually we've, we've got one that's called error page. So we just need to um, go into the template for that and just tell it actually it's called error page. And you'll see why I've changed this um, later down the line. So that was the first step. Um, what we can do now is we can just go into this and just do control C to we shut down the site. We don't need the terminal anymore. Now that we've installed it, we've got a Visual Studio uh, solution. So I'm just gonna use a Visual Studio solution from now on in this demo. Um, and the first step then in the blog post on how to do this is to update the configure method in the startup.cs file to send any error traffic to the URL of forward slash error. So in development mode, we're just using the developer exception page so we see the full details. But if we're not in development mode, we want to see the we want it to be handled by going off to error. So let's take this code here and we'll put it in the configure method. So if we go to the Visual Studio solution and we go to the startup file in here, we'll look for configure. You can do that by clicking on this drop down here. So that's configure services and that's configure. And then there you see the code that matches is development app use developer exception page, etc. So we'll just Put that in after that. So now this block of code matches. Next, we want to create a controller to handle the traffic sent to the error page. Now this is where we would have had a clash. So this is error controller. Um, so we want to copy this. We want to create a folder first of all called controllers. So add new folder to the project and call it controllers. And then we want to add a class and we'll call it error controller. And we'll copy this code. Um, we can actually use the copy button here. So we'll copy that code and paste that in there. Just check in the namespace is right. And luckily that's the same namespace that's in the sample site. Uh, so yeah, it's called error controller and it inherits from just a normal uh, MVC controller. 
So the route that it's coming in on is error. And then what it does is it checks the status code of that um, that particular request. If it's a 200 OK or a 500, it sends it off to the 500 page. Otherwise, it sends it off to the 404 page. So if we were to run that, we would see. But wait, before we do, I want to just carry on. So let's create a content type in Umbraco called error page with two properties. So we already renamed our content type. So what we need to do to be able to get this running again is just click the uh, run without debugging button and then reload this in the back office. So because we've already renamed our content type that was already there, we don't need to create one now. Um, but So we can skip to the next step. It wants us to add an error status code. So we'll do that. So in the document type, we'll find the page called error page. And we'll just add a tab. Now you could do it through compositions and things like that. But for now, we'll just do settings in a tab. And then we'll just do error status code. Uh, choose the status code for this error page. So what we want to do is we want to use a drop down. And we want to create a new configuration. We'll cut that out there. And then use our convention that I like to use that I learned from Mark Goodson. Like that. So that's the type that it is and then what we're calling it. And then we're going to put some pre-values in here. So we could do a 400, a 401, a 403, a 404, and a 500. Comment in the, actually we'll do a 418 as well. Comment in the, put it in the comments if you know what a 418 is. And don't cheat, just uh, don't look it up. Just let me know if you already knew. So we click submit and then we'll submit that and save it. So now we've got an error status code on our page. And then the next bit, it says about adding an error message. We don't need to add an error message because we've actually got, it's like a normal content page. So we can put our error in the actual content. So we can skip to the next step. So we need to allow the error page content type to be a child of home. That's already done. And then we create a page for each of the status codes that you want to support. So let's go in and do that. So if we want to create um, one called 400. Bad request, I think it is. Um, we'll give it a give it a page header, and then well, what we didn't do is we didn't make it mandatory for the uh, drop down. So let's go into settings, click on this, and make it mandatory. And then if we go back to that 400 page, then if we go to uh, save and publish again, it will just come up with an error that will make us choose the correct status code. So then we'll just do one for 404. We'll just do three. 404. Add some content, just say page not found. Save and publish that. Oh, can't do that. I need to choose the correct status code that this one represents. And then we'll do one for the 500 as well. So I know I've created one for 400 and we haven't got that in the routing, but if we wanted to, we could add that to it. I was just showing you that you could do that. Oh, so I'll just add the content. Server error. Put whatever content you want. So, yep. We've got some error pages. So we've done what it says in the tutorial. 
So then the last step is to create a render controller for the error page so we can intercept the traffic and apply the correct status code when the page renders. Uh, so before we do this, you need to make sure you're using Models Builder. Ideally this, you need to generate your Models Builder model first for error page, otherwise it won't be recognized. Well, we, we don't need to do that. We've already proven that we can just change that template to look for error page. So then, um, well, actually, let's see if it'll be an error, if it'll be a problem. Let's just skip to the next stage, but actually, yeah, because we're looking for this model in the code, it might be a problem. We will see. We like to leave errors in. So we're now going to create an error page controller. So you know before we had an error controller. Well, if you remember, um, if, the, if we were to do this render controller for what it was called before, this would also be called an error controller, which would cause issues. So that's why I prefer that if you name your document types that are pages with page in the name, then when it comes to doing something like a render controller, which is the root hijacking for that, it will basically make that a lot clearer and simpler. So we're going to copy the code. We're going to go to the solution, add the class in here, error page controller. And we're just going to paste that in. And because we're using the clean starter kit and everything matches, it's fine. So we do have a problem here because um, we're not using Models Builder um, on the source code auto or the other or source code manual. Then it's got a problem because we're trying to reference it in C Sharp code. So what what we need to do is go back up a little step, and we just need to copy that. So we want to do. Models Builder and the app settings dot development JSON. So after CMS, paste it in there, save that, save that, and now we'll just rerun this. Oh, it's got some errors. Right, so the problem is that we're trying to run this code at this point when it's got some errors. So what we'll do is we will just comment this out, try and build it again, it might have another error here, it might say, oh, you don't have a index method or something, but no, that's fine. So what we want to do is we want to be able to get to the back office, just check that the models have been built. So it sees that we've got models builder, source code manual, generate the models. And now let's just have a look. If we've got a models folder, we have models generated, lovely. And if we just go into, I just wanted to check to see if we have anything else, um, like an Umbraco folder with models, and it doesn't look like we do, so that's good. So now we have that and it can build, we'll just um, we'll take off the comments. It recognizes the model. So now we can run this again. So that's happy with that now. So we've been able to create that error page controller. And let's just have a look what this error page controller does. So what it's saying is, it's saying get the current page as an error page and set the response.status code to be whatever it is in the dropdown basically. And if you don't have a value, just set it to be 500 then return the current template with this model. So yeah, we're basically setting the status code. And then, so by default, for a 404 page, Umbraco was going to intercept that. So let's just have a look. So if we look at the error page now, that should resolve fine. And actually, the root of forward slash error now goes off to 500, so that's cool. Uh, but if we were to put something in that it doesn't recognize, it's still going to the default Umbraco page not found. So what we want to do in the settings under content, we just want to set tell it which content item is the 404 page. So in the app settings, Jason, in here, we just paste that in. And then what we need to do 
is get the key of that page. So if we go to content, 404, info, and we'll grab this GUID here, and we'll just paste that in and save. Just uh, press the arrow again to rerun without debugging. And that will have picked that up now. So if we were to refresh our ASDA page, it goes off to the page not found. Uh, so next, what we want to do is we want to just test. Actually, let's just double check. So now if you've generated your models and build your code, you should be able to test it all out and see that it shows your custom error pages. So yeah, as we saw, if you go to forward slash error, it then redirects you to the 500 page. Um, but what we want to do is test out throwing an actual error. So in the views, let's just go to the home page and we'll just throw a new exception. Like that. Save the view. Go to the home page and we see the error. Now this is because we in the code in the startup CS we've left this use developer exception page. So as it says in the blog post at the bottom that if you're not actually seeing the custom error page when you're in development then you just need to copy uh, comment this out and copy this line and put it into here whilst you're testing it locally. So that way when you rerun it again and then you go back to the home page reload the home page now that's going off to the friendly uh, 500 error page so there you have it we've got the error pages custom error pages implemented we've got it set up for 500 and 404 and you can add others into there as well um, into the controller and you can map those to their custom pages if you wanted to uh, the good thing about this as well is if we inspect and we go to network and we have doc selected and then we do a refresh you can see that on the headers it's actually a 500 status code and then when we do the 404 as well we'll just um, inspect again we go to network and it's actually a 404 and even if you went straight to the 500 page I believe instead of it being a 500 uh, a 200 it should be a 500 and it is it's still a 500 error so yeah that's giving out the correct status codes as well so I hope you liked the video. If you do, please click on like and subscribe to my channel. Um, leave a comment if you've got any questions or any requests or anything like that. Um, and sometimes people say, oh, you know, can I buy you a coffee? It's up to you. But if you wanted to, you could go to codeshare.co.uk slash coffee. Uh, it's never expected, but always appreciated if anyone does. But as I say, there's never a need for it. Um, I just enjoy making the videos and they'll always be free. All right. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you again in the next video. Bye.